John Boykin from the Gilson Engineering Toledo, Ohio office. Today I want to talk about the Siemens Hydroranger LT500 level controller. Uh, many of you have you probably used the traditional Hydroranger or Multiranger or Multiranger Hydroranger HMI in the past. The LT500 is very similar as far as the way it looks, the way it wires, but it does operate a little bit differently. Now the LT500 will accept a 4 to 20 in input from any type of a level control, submersible, ultrasonic, radar, capacitance, whatever. Uh, it'll also communicate digitally via heart to the Siemens LR110, LR120 radar level transmitters, and also the LU240 ultrasonic level transmitter. The LT500 does have a different menu structure than the previous versions of the Hydro Ranger from Multi Ranger, both the ones that require the hand programmer and the Hydro Ranger HMI. So Gilson, we've written a utility here to assist you with programming the LT500 for some of the more common level control applications. And you can download the program by going to our website, www.gilsoneng.com. Once you get to our website, you want to go to Reference, Flow, and Siemens Open Channel Flow Utility. And click on that, it'll download the Excel file. So once you open the program, you notice on the cover page that we have utilities here for programming a lot of the Siemens products. Uh, the older Hydro Rangers, the Hydro Ranger HMI, uh, LUT400, and even some of the radar gauges uh, for doing open channel flow type equations. Um, it's important to remember that the, uh, the LT500 does not program exactly like the older Hydro Rangers. It's got a different menu structure. Uh, so I want to take a look at this program to show you the exact uh, pr uh, parameters need to be programmed for each of these applications. So let's go through a couple of examples here. Uh, the first one I want to go to, let's click on uh, the LT500 for open channel flow. And we'll just make up an example here. Uh, we're going to use an LR120 radar level transmitter. Uh, it'll be for a 6 inch partial flume, 0 to 1000 GPM. It will make the totalizer have one count equal a thousand gallons. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, for our volume units, we can choose between MGD and gallon per minute. We'll choose GPM. The sensor type. And notice we have four selections for sensor type, generic 4 to 20, if it's just a 4 to 20 level transmitter coming in. But we can communicate digitally to the Siemens LR120. So we're going to choose that. That's the radar level transmitter. Response rate, we'll choose medium. For our primary measuring device, you see we have all these different uh, flumes and weirs to select from. But we're going to check or, uh, the 6-inch partial flume. Totalizer unit will be in kgal, so each count will equal 1,000 gallons. We'll have no decimal place on the totalizer. And we're going to select our maximum flow rate of 1,000 GPM. So the 4 to 20 output will represent 0, uh, zero to 1,000 GPM. Looking at the little uh, drawing over here, this is a V-notch weir, but the same will be for a partial flume uh, or any other type of uh, weir or flume. We need to select our low calibration point, which is the distance from the sensor face to my zero flow point. And we'll just make up a value here of maybe 36 inches. And once we do that, it calculates the upper calibration point also, which is the distance from my sensor face to the maximum level at, at, at the maximum flow rate. For zero head offset, we'll just select uh, an offset of zero inches. And low flow cutoff. You don't really want to make that a couple of percent of your full-scale flow rate. So anything below that will be driven to zero. In this case, we'll make it 10 GPM. So anything less than 10 GPM going through that 6-inch partial flume will be driven to zero. So right now, we've got it set up for our application. But unlike some of the older um, Hydro Ranger products that only have pre-programmed views, the LT500, we actually have six display or six views that we can... Uh, determine what, what we want to show up on these uh, various screens. 
Although you have six, normally one or two is all you need. So we're going to program one here. So our first view, we're going to show three things. And I don't want to show any icons on there because in this particular case, I'm not going to be doing any relays. So we're going to show three values in a horizontal bar graph. With our first value being my volumetric flow for point one. Second value on the display will be my totalizer one. And third value, we'll go ahead and just make that the head. So we show all three things on one screen. If I want to have a second screen, just putting one big uh, display for level uh, or flow rate, I can do that. So I'll enable view two. I'll do one value in horizontal bar graph, and that value is going to be my volumetric flow. Nothing else will be shown. So I have two views I can toggle between in the run mode between my uh, flow rate total and head and a second view being a large display for flow rate only. And that's all you need to do is program that in uh, based on all these parameters. Another common application we do is pump control. So we're going to click over to that tab. And in this case, uh, let's just make up an example of 0 to 10 feet with two pumps alternating, a high-level alarm and a low-level alarm. So we're going to make a low cal point uh, 10 feet away from the sensor face, upper calibration point right at the sensor face. That's my 4 to 20 range. I'm going to select feet as my length units. Let's, in this case, instead of using one of the radar gauges, we'll assume maybe a submersible level transmitter or some other device that gives you an analog 4 to 20 signal. So we're going to select 4 to 20 for my sensor type. Response rate, we'll change that to medium. We'll have two pumps, and each pump will be alternating. So alternate duty assist will be the algorithm we use. For pump one, we'll make the set point come on at four feet. We'll go off at three feet. Second pump will maybe come on at six feet and also off at three feet. For my high-level and low-level alarm, we've already got uh, relays one and two taken care of. So come down here to relay three. I'll make my high-level alarm occur at seven feet. Maybe go off at 6.5 feet. My low-level alarm comes on at two feet and off at 2.5 feet. For the analog output, we'll make the upper range value and if we take a look here, we can camp on here. Uh, we'll make 10 feet of level equals 20 milliamp. And 0 feet of level equals 4 milliamp. Maybe a two-second time delay in there. And just like in the open channel flow, we have six screens we can, we can play with. Um, so we're going to come over here to the first view. And really, for a pump control application, the only thing you really probably care about is the actual level and maybe the icons that show you what the relay status is and maybe a vertical bar graph. So view one will be one value, the icons and vertical bar graph, with the first value being level. And everything else in this demo can be none. Another uh, application that we see in the wastewater industry is differential level. And that's normally at the headworks of the plant, where you're looking to measure the differential level between the upstream and downstream of a uh, screen or rake assembly. And when that screen gets clogged up, that's when you want to jog the screen and get the flow going again. So very important to remember for the LT500 to do a differential level which is two sensors upstream and downstream, I need the dual point version or two point version of the LT500 for the level sensor upstream and the level sensor downstream. So let's go ahead and set it up here. Uh, response rate, we'll keep a medium. We'll do inches. We're gonna go to an LR120 for my, both of my level sensors. The milliamp output from the LT500 will represent the difference. That's milliamp output one. And the second milliamp output, we can maybe make the level which is upstream, level one. 
So let's go up here, my locale point, we'll just make up an example that uh, the upstream sensor has a range of zero to, to 60 inches or zero to five feet. So my lower calibration point is 60 inches away from the sensor. Upper cal point is right at the sensor face. Same thing for my downstream. Okay, we're halfway home. For the relays, we'll make relay one. Look at the difference, the upstream and downstream difference. Relay two, maybe the upstream. So for relay one, when we're looking at the difference between upstream and downstream, let's make my onset point a difference of 12 inches. And we turn off and we get down to six inch differential level. For relay two, I'm looking at the absolute level upstream. Maybe make that 40 inches and 30 inches to deactivate. On the four to 20 output, now remember four to 20 output number one is set for difference. So my upper range may make that uh, 36 inches and lower range is zero with a damping of two seconds. So now 4 to 20 output number one is going to represent the difference between the upstream and downstream level with a range of zero to 36 inches. And again, similar to the previous examples we looked at, we want to set up our displays. We have six displays to choose from. We're only going to care about the uh, first one for right now. So display view one, I want to do three values. And I want to include the icons because I'm using relays in this application. My first value will be my level difference. Second value will be point number one. And the third value to display on the main screen will be level point two. And that's really it. Uh, program those numbers in and you should be up and running. Uh, this gives you an example right here of what the, uh, what all these parameters look like the, uh, in a screen application. Uh, so remember, this utility covers the most applications we see in the field just for open channel flow, uh, wet well control, differential. There's a lot more out there and you can reference the manual for the uh, how to program those. Uh, so hope this helps out. Give us a call if you have any questions.